Welcome to CD Mo's Boz online video series. This is Connected Components Workbench Programming Part 3, adding a Panel View 800. Okay, so welcome to Part 3. What we're going to do uh, in this part is add the Panel View 800 touchscreen to the project. So this is the project we've been working on. Uh, you can see we have our controller and our drive, and in our controller we have our uh, block that is controlling the drive over Ethernet. Um, so we're all set here. We're able to control the, the drive from the controller over the network. Uh, but right now we have to go in and we have to toggle bits in the controller. So now we'll add a touch screen so that when we can use the touch screen to control the drive. So the first thing we'll do, just like before, uh, we'll open our device toolbox over here. Get our graphic terminals. Uh, this, the panel view component was the predecessor to the panel view 800. Uh, these are obsolete, uh, but they are still in the software for um, for maintenance purposes. And we're we have a seven inch screen here in the demo box. We're going to drag that into our project. Double click on that. So you'll see the first thing we get to choose is whether we want a portrait or a landscape orientation. Uh, the demo box here is set up for a landscape orientation, but if you had an application where you wanted to flip it up on its side, uh, you're able to do so. So we're just going to leave it there. And then here's our system. So it uh, gives us our version, which I know this is the, uh, the version that's in our demo box here. It's the newest one. Um, it tells us um, what's our protocol for communication to the controller. Uh, so it's the default is the serial. Um, but we're going to use Ethernet. But So if we just click on that drop-down, we see all the various um, communication protocols that we can use on these screens. Um, you can even see the controllers over Ethernet down here. We can use this with the L3, 2, and 1 series of the 1769 Compact Logics. We can use this with MicroLogix and Slick uh, over Ethernet. We can also use Modbus TCP with these screens. And then these are the serial protocols that it can handle. But we're going to be just using the Allen Bradley SIP, um, which is just back to our Micro 800. So then down here under the controller settings, after we select that, uh, we have our controller type uh, is Micro 800. We're going to leave that alone. And here we just need to put the IP address of our controller right like that. And we do have a video on our channel of how to get a, uh, a panel view uh, 800 to communicate with a compact logic cell three. So if you want to know how to do that, you can do that. Check out that video. Most of this can be left as uh, default. And if we just want to come through and just look, kind of look at uh, any of these, the, the timeouts, the ports and everything, but everything gets set at default for you. You don't have to touch it. Uh, these other tabs over here. Uh, so user accounts, that would be security. Uh, we are going to do a video uh, pertaining to panel view security. We'll include what how you can configure that. So that's logins for security purposes. Uh, languages, if you have separate languages that you need to translate throughout the project, you can do that. Um, screen brightness and things like that. If you want to set that programmatically, you can do that rather than setting it on the terminal. And FTP and email. So the FTP allows you to... Um, use FTP protocol to pull alarm history data log recipes out of the uh, panel view. Uh, we'll cover that in another video as well. And then this, this unit is capable of emailing upon an event or an alarm, um, uh, sending an email to uh, an operator or a supervisor or whatever. So this, if you were going to use that feature, you could set that up here. We'll also cover that in, a, in another video as well. So now that we're set up on our protocol, we have our uh, PLC name here. You can name it whatever you'd like. We're just going to leave it at a default PLC one. Um, the next tab over here is the tags. So this is where we would create our HMI tags. So this software behaves a lot like the old um, Factory Talk HMI software, where you do have to use HMI tags and then connect them to controller tags. Um, so here, just as an example, um, if we wanted to our start command for our drive, we could call start push button. We're going to make it a Boolean. Uh, the address in the address. Now, this is nice. The address will come up. It'll automatically search the uh, tags that are in the controller. So we're going to tie that to our start tag in PLC1. 
And there we go. So that's just how easy it is to make the tags. Um, I am going to add one more here uh, just to show um, the next tab. We're going to grab the drive fault. Let's get our address here. Uh, let's see. Drive fault. There we go. In PLC1. So there we go. So that's that's where the tag. Um, oh yeah, here. So we can have our system tags as well. Uh, so just like the time, um, anything that's inside the system. Just so like in Factory Talk VME, when you would pull the time out of the panel view, things like that. That sort of thing is all available here. Your comm status, your battery status. You can use that on displays if you'd like to. So uh, uh, so for our alarms tab over here, same as. Um, Panel views, uh, so factory talk view, ME, you create a trigger. Um, so let's add an alarm for that drive fault. So our trigger would be our drive fault tag. Um, and then our message would be drive. We'll just put a message in here. The drive is faulted. And then we can also insert the date, time, or a number or a string tag as well with that, just that easily. Then to these next two tabs, you can send this to a printer. And you can also send, if you wanted to send an email when this alarm came in, you could click that uh, checkbox as well. And it would send the message the tag number uh, off in a, and the tag name off in an email. Um, recipes, we'll get to that uh, in another uh, session as well, another video as well. So there we are. We have a couple tags. Um, so if we come down to our screens, uh, let's open screen one. So this is screen one is just your default uh, startup screen. Uh, this this button is the configuration button is there by default. You can get rid of that, but then, or you can make it invisible. I would not just delete it because then you have no way to get to the configuration screen uh, of the terminal. Uh, very similar to the shutdown button in uh, in a panel view plus. So to create a start button here, uh, down here in our toolbox. We have our normal momentary, our normal buttons and displays that we're used to from our other HMI software. We're just going to insert a momentary button, bring up its properties here. So we have zero and one. Our background color, I'm going to change to just a green, two different shades. Uh, fill color, uh, we don't need the fill color, but we are going to need the caption color. I'm going to make that black. And then here is the caption text. So we'll make that start drive. And we'll change it to start when we have the button pushed. And we go and hit that. So there's our button. That's the, so that handled the appearance, but where do we do the connection? See, if we hover over it, it shows our connection for our right tag and our indicator tag are both under, unassigned. So over here on the right side are our properties. Right here, connections. This is our indicator tag and our right tag. So if you had a, a tag, um, if we wanted to block this out, um, let's say, um, for an indicator tag, we could do that. If we could just put an if we wanted to gray it out or make it invisible if the drive's running so that we can't start the the, uh, the drive, we could do that. But and then our right tag is obviously where we're writing our one or a zero to. In this case, we're going to just have our start push button. So uh, our, we have the ability to start our drive. Uh, let's see if we have the ability to stop the drive. Um, we don't. So let's go ahead and start put a button in there for that. We put uh, stop. We'll change our color to red just to make this a little different from the start button. And there we go. So now we can start and stop our drive. Um, but how do we know it's actually running? Let's come down here to a multi-state indicator. Zero. Stopped. One is running. We'll just leave everything else at default for now. 
And again, over here on our right side, we're going to use the read tag. Oh, look at this. We don't have a tag here that tells us uh, if we're running or not. So we're going to hit new. Tag is be drive running Boolean. We're going to tie that to our with our active. That's what we were looking for. There it is. Took me a second. And it's in PLC1. Okay. So there we go. We'll double click on that. And now our drive running is in there for our running indication. Something I just forgot about when we copied and pasted our start and stop buttons up here. Uh, we did our start uh, tied to our start push button. But look at this. When we do our stop, it's tied to the same push button. So we need to change that as well. So we're going to click on new. We're going to do our stop push button. We're going to tie that to our stop bit in PLC1. Okay, so now we should be able to start and stop our drive just fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download this. You going back to our menu here, if we double click on our panel view or use the guys across the top here, the tabs, we are going to download this to our panel view. Uh, make sure that there's, okay, we got our valid. We didn't get any errors in our project. We're going to stop the load it, and we're going to go ahead and download this to the uh, demo unit I have here. And then I'm going to turn on a camera so that you make sure I can show you what uh, that the buttons are actually working. Okay, so what we have here is I, uh, I went ahead and downloaded the um, application to our panel view. Um, so you see on the right-hand side of my screen here, I have this is the demo box I have sitting next to me. Um, and then on the left-hand side, we have the live um, uh, function block inside of our controller. So you can see we are getting live values uh, into and out of our drive right here. The drive itself is sitting right here. Um, this is a Kinetics 5100. Uh, the drive we're using is this five, PowerFlex 523 over, this is our controller, our 870. And we have a couple motors down here. But here's our screen over here. So let's go ahead and bring my camera in. See if we can get uh, focused on the screen. Um, so, yep, we just have our start and our stop. Uh, just to show you that that's, that's what we have. Um, so if I come in and hit our start button, we start to spin up the motor. You see over here we're getting live values out of the drive. 15 hertz we're running out. Here's our current and our voltage. Um, and if we move the camera back again, you can see uh, we are running that... Um, motor at 15 hertz so that's how you do some basic start stop um, easy push buttons on the screen um, but there's obviously a lot more that we can do uh, for the sake of time I'm gonna just pause the video um, and I'm gonna uh, create a bunch of tags and some stuff and we'll go over uh, some uh, more advanced uh, display and uh, input output that you can do with this, uh, this screen so as you can see, uh, I added a bunch of stuff to our screen here. Um, this took me about a half an hour, not that long. Um, and um, so just to show you what I did here is that I started with uh, under our tags. You can see I added a tag on the HMI side uh, that's tied to um, a PLC tag for all of the um, tags that are in the communication block for that drive. So. Obviously, you don't have to add an HMI tag for every one of these. Uh, you only need to bring across the information that you would like to display. Uh, I went ahead and added one for every every one of them just in case I wanted, well, you wanted to show them. But um, it, again, it's not necessary. Um, and as you can see, I did. you'll see on the screen here, I didn't use all of these. But I did go ahead and create a tag for each one. So uh, on our screen, what do we have here? So we have our start and stop and our... Um, running and stopped indicator here. I just made those a little prettier, uh, changes to text size and things like that. Um, something else I did is um, this drive, this text box here. So all I did down here um, is in the toolbox is I in, use this text box tool down here, uh, made this, bring in the text box, and then um, 
you can insert uh, tag values in this date time as well as number so integer values um, as well as string values and in this case I have the drive type um, tied to the drive type tag uh, that string value that we're pulling out of the drive as well as the IP address tag so we did that um, and then the speed set points so this is just a, a text display but this um, here this is our numeric input so numeric entry and again that's right here in the toolbox uh, we just inserted one of those and um, under our tags the indicator tag so this is the tag that will be displayed inside this box uh, when the screen is running live and then the right tag um, is the tag you'll write to with the uh, keypad uh, when it pops up so we just use the same one both there and that's for our uh, speed input on the drive um, this down here this multi-state indicator we're going to select this row so you can see it's our drive fault and I have it tied to again over here on the right side in the properties all the way up the top we have this visibility tag you can see these other tags here the position tags height tag width tag you can change the size and position of all of these uh, objects as well by tying them to tags but so we're just using the visibility tag so when we get a drive fault uh, that's when we'll be able to see this uh, indicator pop up um, and then also when we have the drive fault in our read tag and that controls this action so when we go to a value of one we're going to blink uh, this uh, drive fault indicator and then we have a button here that's also tied to our drive fault visibility tag that we can clear the fault when it's present and lastly here uh, just one big text box just to bring in a lot of other values so in this case um, the command speed up at the top here I gave it two decimal places um, and then we also did the actual speed current voltage bus voltage uh, again you can use um, down here in our toolbox you can use the numeric displays and string displays um, just as like you would in factory talk view at me I just chose to utilize the text box uh, I thought it was a little cleaner looking and, and gave, maybe gave you give you something that you not used to doing so I'm gonna go ahead and download this to our screen and we'll take a look at it uh, running live so uh, here we go we are downloaded to the the panel view 800 and uh, same view as last time you can see the actual screen here on my little webcam here um, and then on the left hand side is our live uh, controller that we're monitoring so you see, uh, we do, are filling in, uh, we are reading PowerFlex, this tag here, drive type PowerFlex 523. Uh, our IP address is coming from this tag. And then our speed set point. So you see, we're set at 15 right now. If we were to hit this, and we're going to set this at 45. There we go. Oh, I hit an 8. So 48 is our command speed filled in up here. Speed set point, command speed. If we hit start, we should see our actual speed ramp up uh, in our current and our voltage. So let's go ahead and do that. Hit start. There's our speed, our current. All these are filling in nicely. And we're up to speed. So there you go. Um, so that's uh, some simple stuff that you can do with the Panel View 800. Uh, if you have any more questions, contact your local distributor. Um, and if you want a copy of this um, program um, and you are a customer in my territory, please uh, feel free to email me. Thanks. Once again, thank you for watching. And don't forget to check out future and current videos by subscribing to CED Mosbaugh Electric Supply on YouTube or visiting www.mosbaugh.com media. Thanks again.